Hi folks, uh, I'm Daniel Peterson. Uh, welcome to The Hole on the Corner, a new YouTube uh, series that I'm launching where we're going to talk all things R.A. Lafferty. This is unscripted chat about his works, uh, which I hope uh, folks will enjoy because there is nothing else like this on YouTube and mostly on the internet at all in terms of podcasts or anything else. I have seen, I have seen a few videos that talk about some Lafferty books, um, but literally a few. I can count them on one hand if, if that many. Um, so, you know, just trying to fill in a gap here. Um, you know, I did my PhD uh, and finished it in 2020, focused on the works of R.A. Lafferty. Um, you know, so, you know, I've read you know, most everything he's published and some of the unpublished stuff and things like that. You know, I'm just a big fan, a big nerd, <laughs> R.A. Lafferty nerd. Um, so, you know, that's my only bona fides or whatever you, however you pronounce that, um, <laughs> uh, for doing this. But, uh, you know, obviously it would be ideal if somehow I can figure out how to get some guests on, you know, uh, by video at some point. There are uh, other experts, um, Andrew Ferguson in particular, uh, is an American scholar that is the premier scholar on R.A. Lafferty, and I'll always be drawing on his knowledge when I when I talk about Lafferty. Um, but it'd be great to get him on here, and there's some other people as well, quite a few others, you know, who are fans, who have worked in some publishing around Lafferty and, and Lafferty scholarship and different things. So, uh, yeah, but that, that's, you know, I'm going to try to, you know, bring in scholarship if I can, when and where it's appropriate, uh, but also keep this, you know, just kind of a fan-based, like, this is for everybody type of uh, production. <laughs> uh, you know, hopefully the sound and the video quality are at least okay enough for this to work. Um, it is, uh, you know, there's not going to be any video editing, so it's not going to be about um, uh, visuals so much as listening, so it's something you can put in your ears. You know, I will try to do things like, uh, you know, hold up book covers and stuff. I, I like to watch these videos, people talking about a book they've read. I, I watch more things about albums uh, where people hold up an album and talk about it for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so, I you know, I'm putting out something that I do enjoy myself. Um, but, you know, I think if, if you're hungry enough just to hear some Lafferty chat, this, this will probably do the trick for you. Um, it certainly would for me. So uh, my plan to begin with is we're gonna run through uh, the novels of Lafferty. We're gonna do uh, three videos on that, three shortish videos, um, because he's got a 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s output um, that kind of conveniently divides up uh, his career. And so we'll do a video on each one. Uh, and I've got this little conceit I want to do just, you know, it's a massive oversimplification, but it's a fun way to kind of jump into this and maybe get a conversation going. I would love to see whether you agree or disagree with me in the comments, but I'm going to rate each novel as to whether it is a rant or a romp. <laughs> They're kind of the two main things that Lafferty does, both of which, let me just be clear, I think are wonderful and exciting. Um, you might hear rant and think, oh, this is going to be, you know, a messagey novel or something that is boring or what have you. Um, some of them are kind of messagey, although, <laughs> you know, Lafferty is an, <laughs> he's a strange writer, you know, he's a, he's a, his fiction is weird. It's not exactly weird fiction like that category, though I think it, it leans into that in some ways, but it is a weird form of, of fiction. And so even when he's messaging, it's going to be very strange uh, and, you know, almost esoteric in a lot of ways. Um, and, I, and I think the so-called rant novels, as I'm oversimplifying them, uh, are as colorful and thrilling and, and excite, as exciting as um, the romp novels. But for the fun of it, Let's call them rants and romps. All right, so let's get started with the 1960s. This is when Lafferty broke out as a writer, uh, as a short story writer initially in the, the early to mid 60s. He starts writing in the science fiction magazines of the time, a couple particular ones um, where the editors were favorable to more experimental fiction. Uh, I believe If was one of the main ones, and I believe that was edited by Frederick Pohl. Uh, whichever magazine, Frederick Pohl edited, he, he, he brought in a lot of Lafferty, so we can thank him for that. Um, and there were a few, uh, Galaxy, it might even be Galaxy that Pohl did. Uh, please, <laughs> please tell me in the comments. Like I said, this is unscripted. I, haven't, I don't have a bunch of research notes, although I will try to do a bit of that in the future. Point being, 
Uh, Lafferty uh, was not a young man when he started publishing. Uh, he was uh, 40 uh, something, early 40s, I think. Uh, and he had tried writing. This is the, this is kind of an apocryphal story as I understand it. Uh, and again, Andrew Ferguson is the go-to person on this. And you can, his blog is called Continued on Next Rock, uh, which is the name of a Lafferty story. And uh, there you can find him talk about some of the, the history, especially manuscript history of, of Lafferty's short stories in particular. Um, and you get a lot of biographical information. And, and, and Ferguson is working on a, a, a biography of Lafferty, um, which we're all looking forward to. Um, so you can look him up on, on some of these details. But uh, Lafferty began, uh, or tried to start writing around 20, we're told, and uh, was uh, told by maybe a creative writing instructor, like, you know, you've got potential here with this sample, but you need to uh, go live life for a while. Maybe I, I apocryphally said something like, you know, go live life for 20 years and then come back to it. And, and it seems that Lafferty kind of literally did that. <laughs> Went and just lived a life for 20 years. No writing to speak of that we really know of. Maybe a little something in there. Uh, and then just comes back to it in his early 40s. And when he starts, man, he starts. He just gets going there. Um, so, uh, so he writes these short stories. He's getting a bit of a name for himself. Harlan Ellison famously puts him in his first uh, Dangerous Visions uh, anthology. And that kind of uh, places Lafferty in a particular... Um, uh, vein of science fiction uh, called the New Wave, um, in which he fits quite well and then doesn't fit at all. <laughs> and this is true of, of science fiction in general and, and most categories you try to put Lafferty in. But the, the story is that Lafferty, well, Lafferty himself has said that he uh, began, I say has said, I'll probably speak of him in present tense a lot, um, but he, he lived uh, roughly, I want to say, 1914 to 2002. I think I'm just about right there. Um <laughs> uh, but uh, he, he began by just trying his hand at, at quite a few different types of stories, mainly different types of genre stories, mystery stories, uh, I think some sort of action-adventure stories, um, uh, uh, and science fiction. Uh, I'm trying to remember a few other uh, categories there, but regardless. And the science fiction ones were the ones that sold. Okay, he's, you know, a pe few people bought them, and, you know, Lafferty... <laughs> for all that he is an absolute visionary, a literary, and I would suggest sort of philosophical visionary, um, you know, he, he could be quite practical and quite down to earth. He was, he was, you know, trained as an engineer and did kind of worked the counter, as it were, you know, worked the till in electronical engineering. Um, and he really knew about that kind of thing and, and, and lived, you know, a pretty blue collar life and, and knew a lot of blue collar people. And so he's a down to earth guy uh, and, you know, could be quite practical. So these stories sold and he's like, bang, here you go. I'm writing some more of those and those sold. And so he's like, okay, yeah, I'm a science fiction writer, sure. You know, and he snuck in, you know, uh, a wonderful, unique uh, iteration and development of, to some degree, the American tall tale, somewhat in the vein of Twain, but also reaching before Twain to the oral tall tale, which is what Lafferty grew up with from his family, uh, on the actual Oklahoma frontier. Um, frontier, and we'll, we'll, I'm not going to talk about that today, but we, we can talk about the, you know, problematic American history and how Lafferty fits into that. But, um, uh, so, so, uh, you know, he sneaks in this, this sort of tall tale type of storytelling. I mean, there's a lot more involved. He, he was also influenced by literary writers, particularly Chesterton and indeed Mark Twain and, and quite a few others, that, but not science fiction writers. Here's the thing. <laughs> you know, he says himself, you know, I didn't really grow up reading science fiction magazines and, you know, he read some H.G. Wells and that kind of thing, but that was about it, you know. But he's like, okay, and he kind of, and you can tell he's kind of looking around at the field and going, so what are people doing? You know, what kind of tropes, science fiction tropes? I can I can work with that. But if, then he works with them in the most wonderful, odd, you know, ways, and sometimes you know, subverts them, sometimes turns them on their heads, sometimes kind of puts you know, famously in his story, continued on next rock, he kind of put in a science fiction premise. He describes how he wrote it. He built, he built in the science fiction premise and, and wrote the whole story and then took the, the, that science fiction premise out, he says. It was kind of about like a time travel type thing and he just like took it back out again once he'd finished this. I think that's wonderful and strange and hard to understand, but, but you know, intriguing. 
Um, so, so, you know, Lafferty's a very unique writer, and people say he writes Lafferty's, you know, because um, it's, you know, it's really hard to put him in any other category. Um, but they sold in the science fiction field initially, certainly for a decade. Um, did, you know, he did really well, you know, still, you know, not a main, you know, main mainstream best-selling, but, you know, within that realm, he, he was doing all right for himself. So 1968, it's not until 68 that he, he, he puts out some novels and he's been, he's been working on them in the sixties, but he comes out with a bang in 1968. And that's all we're talking about in this video. Uh, and he comes out with a bang and he has three novels come out in 1968, Space Shanty, um, the Reefs of Earth and Past Master, and, I'll, the, uh, and then there's this 1969 novel. So we're only talking about four novels, but I've got a stack here because I've got various editions of them. But initially, we've got Space Shanty. Well, I, I don't know the exact order of these. I was trying to look that up, and I, I couldn't see like months. But um, let's start with Space Shanty. It's the probably the shortest one. Came out as an ace double with another novel on the other side. Um, and, you know, it's a short, his novels are generally short, some of them quite short. This is in the Dobson copy, it's like 120 pages. Uh, some people don't like these Dobson covers. I think they're just an absolute blast. The, the spacecraft they ride are called Hornets, I think. And so that's why he, we've got like a knight riding an insect. Because it's a, this novel is a, uh, is a rough and ready uh, space western kind of version of Homer's Odyssey. And it goes around on the journeys that like home uh, that uh, Odysseus went on, uh, and but in a on other planets uh, with alien species or or whatever, and and they run into all kinds of trouble. It's an absolute blast. It is definitely without a doubt a romp, and I mean argue with me if you want, but this is a pure romp. Um, there's you know there's it's easy to actually uh, skip over this a little bit, uh, not skip over it, but but take it as pure silliness silly entertainment very enjoyable people you know fans tend to love it but you can kind of think okay he's not saying much deep here this is just a laugh no he's he's got stuff going on here and it's kind of almost at a mythic level which is powerful you know and it's this is this is high octane lafferty to be honest if and you need to read it maybe two or three times to kind of really clock into that um but regardless it's a romp and i'm just gonna call it that so put these in my discard pile Moving on, also 1968, uh, The Reefs of Earth. Um, and again, I'm going to have to say this is easily a romp. Um, this is one of the 1968 versions. Uh, I'm not sure who did this cover. I, li I like these like cut and paste type covers that were going around then, along with most of the other types of styles they were doing, which I should say this, this Ace Double is worth getting if you can because it has these uh, Vaughn Bode. Is that who the uh, illustrator is? I always forget. Um, yes, and he was a pretty famous, I guess, underground sort of fan. He does this cover, and then there's a bunch of, each chapter is headed with, really, some of them are just quite rad um, drawings in here. So I won't try to show you all of them, but, and they do kind of capture what this novel feels like, uh, the, the cartoonish, uh, animated kind of quality of it. But so here's the, you know, 1968, The Reefs of Earth. You're like, you wouldn't know what that's about. Here, maybe you're getting a clue. There's another Dobson one. Apparently, this one gets used online as like, worst book covers ever. I love this book cover. It is, it's hilarious. And maybe it's bad, uh, but a, to me, a good bad. I just, and and it looks like, kind of like what the kids are described like in, in this uh, novel. And then this recent publication that Locus um, put out, who bought the rights to Lafferty's stuff. Uh, not a bad cover. Looks a bit like a Stephen King novel or something to me. I don't like this format of a really wide book, especially for such a short one. And then you've got these, you know, a whole bunch of text right out to the margins on the pages. I'm not a big fan of that, but it's no big deal. Unfortunately, this is a little riddled with some typos and some print infelicities. You know, they don't get his italics right and things like that. Um, and I think that's from the technology they used. And they just... You know, Lafferty lacks in um, copy editing, proofreading, unfortunately, right throughout his career. There's some, there's some really good stuff, in, and, uh, but he's plagued. His, his works are plagued by that kind of thing. But you can get past it. So if this is the only one you can get, uh, I still think you'll have a blast. It's a oh, such... Not everybody loves it as much as me, but it is one of my favorites. It's, it's really Oklahoma. It's one of his main Oklahoma novels set in Oklahoma, small towns and... It's all about these kids who are 
somewhere between aliens and goblins, <laughs> and they're kind of called both. They, they are technically aliens, but they're called puka, which is an Irish goblin, uh, and they're called goblins a lot. And they, they look like humans, but then they have a weird shine in their eyes or they have a twitch of their ear that, you know, but they try to wreak havoc in this very, um, it's like Huck Finn, uh, uh, you know, you know, you want to say things like on crack. It's not, <laughs> but it's Huck Finn, you know, f to the next degree and, and wild and hilarious. And they try to cause chaos. They don't cause as much as they want to, but they do get some pretty, there's some pretty gruesome stuff going on and it's. It's wonderful. Uh, I think it's a romp and a very fun one. Uh, and lastly, in 1968, we have Past Master. I don't think I have a 68 version of that, sadly. Uh, this is um, one I found once for a pretty decent price that I've never heard of. And there's a whole series that kind of have these covers. Most of them are a little better than this one. Um, this one didn't get one of the best ones. But uh, this is, let's see if I can find out real quick. This one came out in 70. Yeah, 1970, so not too far off. Um, yeah, and you know, I've got this, these are the ones I really don't like, the Wild Side Press ones, but for, when I first got into Lafferty, this was like the main thing you could find for cheap. Uh, so that's a crappy cover, I'm trying not to swear, uh, to keep this family friendly. Um, this kind of really boring, but I guess sort of, collect, you know, library edition type thing. Uh, and then this, the Library of America has now put out Past Master on its own. Again, wow, what a boring cover. Come on, do something relevant to the story. Give an idea of what you're about to get into. This could be anything, any science fiction thing. And it, you know, and Lafferty is just so much more than science fiction. I love science fiction, <laughs> don't get me wrong, um, but Lafferty is just so much more than that and I would love his covers to indicate that. Anyway, this is, is a good quality edition, and it's got some extra work by Andrew Ferguson um, uh, in footnotes in the back and stuff and some manuscript history, so it's really awesome. But, you know, just a good copy of it. Uh, he was really kind to mention my work on Lafferty in the introduction, uh, which was really sweet and helpful and did make a lot of sense because he talked about how the political stuff in some ways may look a little dated, but not entirely, um, but then... Uh, the ecological element of the novel, which is what my PhD focused on with Lafferty in general, uh, is, is more relevant now perhaps than even when he wrote it. Um, and it has what I called an eco-monstrous quality or eco-monstrous poetics, and you see that in this novel. Again, now here we have a hybrid. Okay, this is both a romp and a rant. And there's different ways that uh, Lafferty hybridizes those two. Sometimes they're really fused. Um, and this one I wouldn't call it fused. Uh, it's not a fusion of ramp and rant. It's romp and rant. It's more of a uh, oscillation. It oscillates back and forth. There's the ch opening chapters, pure, you know, uh, rant. It's a conversation. There's there's a romp around it. There's some violent activity around it, but it's mainly a conversation. Then it, chapter two, it launches into one of the best sort of like sci-fi space adventure things I've ever read. And then it kind of goes back to some a lot of political talk, but then it comes back into this whole part about the feral lands of the planet Astrobe or Astrobe. Um, and there's monsters galore and it's beautiful. It's what a good time. Um, uh, so that's past master and I would call it a hybrid of, of ramp and romp, romp an uh, uh, oscillating one. And then lastly for this video, um, we have fourth mansions and here's the famous original cover by uh, the Dillons. Uh, Leo and Diana, I believe. Um, love this cover. Oh man! Uh, and then people make fun of this cover. I think it's I think it's a good time. Uh, I got one. Re I managed to get a reading copy, and then I can kind of keep this one nicer. I don't I don't take great care of my books. Okay, I'm sorry if that hurts. But <laughs> anyway, um, that gives you an idea of some of the stuff going on in there. Although it might make you think there's literal frogs, but it's more of more of a psychical type thing, which this, you know, there's a big brain weave, mind weave aspect to it, and you get a little more of that in this cover. Uh, and this one, okay, so this is, uh, does this really fit the romp rant uh, uh, dichotomy that I've f foolishly and, and for fun made? Um, I would say this is another hybrid, um, and this is more of a fusion. Okay, so this is, Mostly a romp, but there are a lot of, of declamatory sort of passages, uh, conversational, and there's like literal 
college lectures in here, okay? <laughs> um, and they're a blast, you know, and they're being like seen and commented on by people in a psychic mind weave. <laughs> but the, but the, the actual lectures themselves are very colorful and esoteric and wonderful. Um, so it's a romp rant hybrid, but more of a fusion than I would say past master is. And that's Lafferty coming out the gate in the 1960s with, you know, really all of these are kind of landmark novels. And, and if uh, uh, Lafferty's novels get a bad rap, but um, I would say um, these are actually, uh, his novels are as good as his short stories. That's my stance. <laughs> At least as good, sometimes better. Um, and uh, these 60s novels are actually a really good place to start. I, I love his late experimental novels. Mwah. Um, and people really, you know, aren't into those. A lot of people aren't. Um, but I think they're brilliant. Um, so we'll get to those. But I, I do think these 60s novels are, are a good place to start. So that is episode one of The Hole on the Corner. Uh, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do comment. Uh, please fact check me, correct me, all that good stuff. But also, you know, tell me your opinion about these novels, about whether they're a romp or a rant, if you want, um, and anything else. Also, uh, you know, you uh, can subscribe to this if you want to get notices for when the new one comes up and these sorts of things. Um, but next, we're going to talk about the 1970s novels, um, and hopefully that'll be a real good time as well. So thanks for listening, and see you next time. Bye.